Um, hi, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, today's In Conversation, um, so looking at sculpture in the digital world. Um, for those of you who do not know me um, or do not know us, um, my name is Jen Ellis, uh, and I'm the co-founder of Aura with uh, Benny Allen. Um, and um, um, Aura is a virtual gallery, members platform shop, um, and we combine art, architecture and music with the aim of instilling a sense of calm, well-being and discovery. Um, alongside our running, our running exhibitions, um, we have this virtual gathering series uh, that's part of our exchange program. So every week we hope to bring together members of our community, either existing or new, um, with the aim of having interesting and dynamic uh, lateral conversations. Um, so, you know, thank you so much for joining us, no matter where you may be in the world. Um, we're ready already within uh, the group of people joining us today as speakers. We have definitely three different time zones. I would say even four, actually. Um, so we really appreciate um, you being here. Um, we thought we'd kick off just by giving just a little brief explanation about how um, the idea of focusing on sculpture for this exhibition came about. Right. Um, and, you know, Benny's going to say a couple of words about the space. We'll introduce ourselves. But we're really lucky today to be joined here by the four finalists um, of our open call for sculpture, uh, which we'll explain in due course. Um, and also a couple of members of our jury, um, because it wasn't just um, Benny and myself, as well as our curatorial assistant, Inji Kim, picking the artist this time, but rather a collaborative group effort. Um, so they'll say more about what each of them are doing, but um, maybe I'll start off with why sculpture, right? So this is Aura number three. This is the third exhibition that we've had since our launch in June um, of 2020. And one of the things that we realized was, okay, we're interacting with, I don't know, like painting or drawing, you know, through images. But one thing that we're really, really missing is interacting with sculpture in a physical dynamic way. We also noticed that maybe you know, creating sculpture, it might be more limited now in light of the pandemic with access to maybe different places where you can do that, but also the shipment is gonna be harder. You also moving from place A to B is gonna be more difficult. And we've always been about creating opportunities for display. Right. And so we really wanted to do was create an opportunity for sculptors to create and articulate their work in a digitally native space, ergo ours, you know, Aura. Um, we were also in tandem thinking about uh, the curation of the show. Um, and we were thinking about bodies and the idea that, you know, over the course of, let's say the last year, you know, I, I personally feel that I've become hyper aware about my own body because it's what I spend so much time with. Um, and whether it be in, you know, in essence, but also in physicality of the spaces we inhabit, um, but also our individual psychologies. So approaching all of this in, um, in an expansive rather than just like formulaic, um, you know, literal um, manner. Um, so we launched an open call in November and we were so, so thrilled um, to put together an incredible jury. Um, so we um, requested Ying Tan, um, who's with us here today. Um, Ying has just moved to the Art Fund and before opening up the call to all of you, we were having a chat of when she was, you know, previously she was at Future City. Um, then we were joined by Christina Chua, who's currently in Singapore. Uh, lucky to snag her before um, the two days before Chinese New Year. Um, and I know it's all the way in the evening for you. And we were joined by Helen Phoebe, um, who's the head of curatorial program at Yorkshire Sculpture Park and um, also Shrey Sethi, who's the founder of Curator Mag in Mumbai. Um, so a wide spectrum of people. And we were, we didn't really, I mean, Benny, I mean, I think we both really didn't know or none of us really knew how many applicants we would get. I think we kind of estimated like maybe 20. Um, it was definitely not that. We received way more from every single corner of the globe. Um, and uh, we each independently went off and um, selected 
um, selected our, you know, top five um, artists. And in the end, we narrowed down on four and all four of the sculpture finalists are with us here. Um, so we've got Oren, Oren Penhasi, um, who is based in New York. We've got Adeline, Adeline de Monsigna, who's over in Mexico. Um, Amba Sayel Bennett, who's in London and Princess P who is renaming anonymous um, and over in India. Um, so I don't know, maybe, uh, I think I've said maybe a bit enough, like Benny, maybe you'll say two words about the space. I mean, I feel like, especially about it being digitally native and it's such a space that really, I don't know, it opens itself up to art, to, 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 to sculpture, right? It's so monumental and so on and so forth. For sure. Um, whilst I talk about it, I think I should play the little trailer. So for Ooh, those yes. of you who haven't been in the space, uh, this is a little snippet of, of what you'd expect. So really to talk about the space, you really have to start with my sort of background and how I approached the project. So when Jen came to me with this idea of creating a virtual gallery, um, I was really thinking of spaces that inspired me and Jen, places that we'd been to. And every time I was really interested in the way that the spaces not only helped to show the art, but also were inspiring in themselves. So the way that we designed this gallery was all about creating spaces that would be inspiring, promote discovery. Each of the rooms have certain qualities that um, create a sense of um, wonder within them. Each one has a, an atmosphere that we really wanted to try and um, generate through the way that the light comes through in each space, the way that the art is displayed. And really the, the most important thing about these spaces is that it, it's a combination of the way that the art is displayed and how it makes someone feel within them. So I think we've, if you've been able to visit one of our um, architect and curator led tours, we go in a lot of detail about the inspiration for each space. One thing that I always try and get across is that with virtual reality, you're able to design almost anything. And one of the important things for Jen and I is to, do, to make a space that is somewhat familiar to people. So we didn't want to do something that was completely alien, something that felt too, um, too out there. So everything that's designed has a real um, emotive reason. So the way that the texture on the walls helps you to feel like it's a space that's almost carved into the landscape the way that the openings um, are designed, there are certain size, everyone understands the size of a door. So that relates to, the, to a person, it creates a human scale. The way that the light comes through is supposed to mimic sunlight. Um, so all these different aspects are supposed to enhance the experience of the user so that it doesn't feel like it's something that you're being transported to and you don't really associate or you don't really feel comfortable with. Um, and the last thing I'll say is I think that for us, this virtual gallery is sort of an experiment. So each show we're constantly developing it. The first one was very different to the second. This one, if you notice um, from past um, shows, the light is very, very different. So we wanted to almost relate to the time of year that we're in. So the way that the light is very diffuse is this sort of winter light. And um, I think that the, the sculpture uh, pieces that we've chosen really work very well in the space and and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, I think we'll we'll each now give ourselves a little bit of an introduction. Um, I think we'll start with yeah. Ying. Ying, over to you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was on mute. Um, Hi everyone, thanks so much for, for joining us again. Um, I'm Ying, I'm currently Senior Programs Manager at the Art Fund, um, but yeah, like Jen said previously, I was Head of Public Art at um, Future City, um, which is a placemaking agency based in London. Um, I suppose from um, a jury's point of view, I mean, it's always really interesting um, to sort of see 
see what artists come back with and to see the, the sort of expansive wide variety of responses from artists um, as they interpret, you know, the, the really, I thought, really thoughtful sort of theme of this, um, of this exhibition. And I guess from, yeah, from my perspective, I suppose speaking on behalf of myself and perhaps a bit of Helen, I guess we were coming from the background of sort of curating or commissioning um, physical works in a physical space, um, sometimes in a public space and sometimes within, um, you know, a gallery or a museum. Um, so it was really interesting and sort of pushing my own boundaries and considering um, all of these artists' admissions for, for Aura. Um, and I guess what I will say, um, just to round off was, um, it, you know, it, it's amazing that, this particular space is sort of made in mind for the works that will go in it. I think a lot of times, you know, one thing is always set um, and is always sort of uh, immovable with respect to the other thing. Um, and what was really great about this process is that we can consider all of these aspects. So like Benny was saying, you know, the light was very specific to these works for this space. And I think that's so particular about this, um, this digital exhibition. So, yeah. Great. That's awesome. I think I should also say, and Jen can, can talk a bit more about it, but what I found interesting in the way that the whole show was curated is that the, the works themselves, these sculptures in particular, sit at the heart of each of the spaces and then the things around yeah. them really work towards it. And I think that that's something really beautiful. And one thing I'll also say is that um, I love the fact that each time we develop a new show, we find surprises within it. So the things that you, because it's not a space that I can physically go to every time I'm finding bits within it that I find really interesting, like the way that an artwork sits on a wall or the way that the, for example, Amber's work sits in the middle of this piece of water, which, you know, we never imagined we put something in the middle. So for us, it's a really, really exciting opportunity. So every time we're, we're learning something new about our own space. Um, Christina, do you want to? introduce yourself and, and talk a little bit about your experience being the judge? Sure. Um, <laughs> well, yes, I think um, it, it was an adventure exploring the nooks and crannies of Aura because there are these, you know, little porticos. Um, but for me, I think because I am the chief editor of, of So Far, um, which explores um, let's say experimental and digital new media practices. Um, I, unlike um, Ing, I quite, I was well adapted to, to the virtual space and looking at a lot of the submissions. Um, we had a lot of artists who were already rendering um, sculptures digitally. Um, mm. And uh, interestingly, I think the jury pushed those aside um, and we're more interested in placing real physical sculptures and transitioning them or adapting them to, to the digital space. But for me, I think looking at the submissions, I was already quite familiar with um, the material that, that was um, being presented. Um, and some of them stood out to me. I think I used too much of my so far lens and I was like, wow, these are amazing artists, even for my platform. But um, mm -hmm. I <laughs> had to remember as well that um, one of the, uh, I would say core tenets of Aura is to also inspire this sense of calm um, and that light is so important to it. It really uplifts you. Um, the, the music is, is so, mm, lightweight and, and ambient. And there's that atmosphere that is quite original, I would say, um, to any other virtual environment that I've explored. I think that honestly, a correlation for me would be the journey. If you've ever played that video game, 
where, which is just um, um, kind of an, an unnamed solo character exploring almost a, a beautiful wasteland. Um, have, have any of you have any of you encountered this video game? Yeah, and, and it, it reminds me of that. You should check it out. It, it's it, it's a, yeah. kind of this open narrative, and and you just explore through the desert, um, and there's this light as well. Um, so Aura does re remind me of that type of virtual space, um, and it's quite unlike anything else that I've uncovered, at least um, in my research through through so far, or just looking at what what's out there with um, these kind of cutting edge new media practices and, and virtuality in general. Um, a little um, kind of another note on my background, I also run an art consultancy and uh, an education group called Metis Art. Um, and that's where I, I have to, you know, kind of pivot and, and work with artists who are more traditionally white cube artists and um, and so it was is refreshing to to be taken back to to the materiality of sculpture uh, uh, of individuals like your, yourselves, Oren, you know, Adeline, and so on. Um, and so yeah, I think it was it was a, an amazing experience to to be a part of this jury. Amazing, I think actually your comment on materiality is a perfect place. Um, to actually lead over and um, invite you, Oren, to say a couple of words about yourself and your practice um, and also the wonderful works uh, that you're showing in Awara that are part of uh, the crowd. Um, but, you know, I'll hand over to you. Hey, hi, everyone. Um, first of all, thank you. It was um, an amazing process and if you you talked about the materiality so just you know just to say um i was surprised how well um nick was able to translate these works into uh, 3d uh, sculptures and capture things like the glass and the materiality of the work um and oh i need to introduce myself so i'm <laughs> Um, my name is uh, Oren, and um, I'm originally from Tel Aviv. I moved to uh, the U.S. in 2012 um, when I went to grad school. I uh, went to Yale University. Um, and since I'm based here, um, but I travel often to Europe, um, I, I often travel for shows because I... Um, prefer to produce work in the city where I work um, and spend a lot of time in the spaces that I'm showing in um, because I think that my work is is kind of based a lot on this back and forth between humans and things or humans and architecture and the way that it's some sort of a, a co-creation or co-designing um, between us and the environment and um, I, I enjoy this project in, 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 I think, this way particularly because um, if Benny was talking about how the space um, in some ways was designed in relation to the work, I feel like for me the work is uh, not the opposite but the other side of it, which is um, kind of thinking about, you know, in, in, in a way I think part, what, part of what makes us human Sorry for the grand <laughs> declaration of what makes us human, but um, <laughs> I think of you know the the fact that we're an organism, but we're an organism with a body, and the word body is already incorporating the ability to see the body as an image, um, and as a surface of uh, that that is inscribing on itself um, the symbolic order, or um, um, yeah, I would say the symbolic order in that sense, architecture as part of the symbolic order that we build, but then in turn is inscribed into our bodies. Um, and so in this, in this body of work, especially, I was concentrating because often I have installations that creates a whole environment. Um, this body of work was shown in physical first in uh, St. Cyprian Church uh, with Ada Losanti, the gallery that I work with in London and then at the gallery. And so this is in a way the third space 
that the show is uh, the work the work is shown at um and yeah i was i was kind of you know was it was um knowing that i'm going to show in the church and the way that this neo gothic church was so rich in these elements architectural element taken from nature i was deciding to which is something that exists in my work often uh, kind of borrowing gothic logics um I was assigned to concentrate on this marriage between body and architecture. Um, part of it was the experience of, you know, the confinement of our spaces, um, but on one hand and the expansion into the digital space on the other hand. Um, yeah, I have much more to say, but I feel like maybe I'll keep it, I'll keep it short. Um, and maybe last thing that I want to say in turn in relation to this digital platform um, is that as a sculptor, you know, often I actually use more simple versions of uh, digital creation like SketchUp, but it's a really amazing way because um, there is a certain reality to working with materials. Um, you know, it takes space and um, it's wasteful and um, it's real. It takes a toll on the body too. So playing in a digital space, designing in a digital space is actually kind of an amazing way to not only um, not only project an idea, you know, as an image, but really be able to think through making without the physicality of it. Um, or without the limitations of the material, at, at least at that point. Um, so I was really happy to see, you know, I was confused, to, to be very honest, I was confused at first. <laughs> um, <laughs> but then kind of realized that um, when it's done on this level, it actually is opening up an amazing possibility because of, because of the ways we already, things are inscribed into our body. I believe that in, a, in the right design or the right platform, um, viewers can experience sculpture in a different way, but that is in some ways also touching kind of like the real of the body and the real of the connection between body and architecture. So yeah, I'm very excited to see the result. I think it's a really interesting that you said it's in a different way. And, uh, you know, with with your work, I remember with Benny, when we were speaking to Nick, um, the, you know, the VR technologist who was quite, you know, hands on with each one of you, each of the each mm -hmm. of the artists, um, we flagged him and we're like, Nick, you really got to work on the texture. And there, there was, you know, some really, you know, interesting back and forth. And it was what was very interesting, Oren, and I, I've actually not shared this with you, but we had a catch up call with Nick later and he's like, I could have taken even more time on that material and it was just like him himself was like taking on this perfectionism of the like and and, and that's quite beautiful because his background is as a gamer right so it, yeah. it's a, like a gaming technologist so that 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 conversation that just started to happen um but it all comes down to care right and um you know care respective of what your what your medium is um and you know having an understanding of tactility and how tactility manifests itself um in the digital world uh which i think you know speaking of tactility it's a really interesting point um to introduce actually um adeline um adeline i say adeline adeline de monsignor like uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about um your proposal because actually yours is an entirely the digital connection has picture. suddenly gone bad. Sorry? I think she said her internet suddenly gone bad. Are you oh. there? Adeline? It's good. I'm back. You're back. back. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> can you can you guys see me? <laughs> we can hear Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yes. So I'm No, I think she's no. just dropped out, unfortunately. Adeline, are you there? I'm, I'm here. Yes, I'm back. This obviously has to happen just as I'm about to speak. <laughs> yeah, traffic. <laughs> so, I'm Adeline. I'm based in Mexico City at the moment. I'm, I split my time between London and Mexico City. And um, I found it so interesting to be working on 
on this on this proposal because it was also at the same time as I started working on pieces digitally and I thought what Oren was saying is so interesting because as sculptors what we tend to do is we go to we go straight to materials we make it can be wasteful and I find I found that working in a different way to start with the digital made it so that we could have a more sustainable practice in a way uh, see our work, imagine the spaces around, see how it, how it breathes within the space, how the shadows hit it, how, and it doesn't have to compromise texture at all. On the contrary, with Nick, we really, I really pushed for him to, to emphasize the, the tactility of the pieces because the, it's, it's still covered in uh, a sort of velvet skin. So the tactility is really present in those pieces. Uh, so that in fact about all these surfaces that at the moment we sort of scrutinize and and we start we think twice about touching at the moment with with the pandemic it's uh, I'm, I just remember being on the and on the tube in London and just thinking of, about all these all these surfaces that suddenly suddenly we just decided no longer to touch but back in the days we would just touch naturally intuitively without thinking twice so it's just got me thinking a lot about our, our own presence within spaces and our relationship with, with touch and tactility, always, but especially nowadays. Um, and my work has often been about the frustration of not touching. So I quite like presenting work that inherently can't be touched because it's in the, the, the digital space yet suggest the touch because you can get really up close to the, the sculptures and see the, the materiality. Um, so I thought that was a very, very interesting experience. And wanted to thank the jury <laughs> for this opportunity. <laughs> yeah, but we, we thought this, it was, um, it was very interesting that, you know, this idea of tactility and actually we used that um, as a so you know each of your each sculptor uh, each sculptor's works each of your works are occupying a particular space in our so we really want you know that idea of breathing we wanted each artwork to be able to breathe and to sort of what Benny was describing beforehand in that it was sort of like the backbone moving outwards um, for the curation of the show and actually what you're describing tactility and you're like I remember being in London so actually we used that idea of memory and that mm -hmm. mnemonic muscle as actually the backbone for curating um, the space that your sculptor is in turn um, is in is in turn um, occupying and breathing life into, right? So we've got two different um, photographers who are thinking about memory, but actually thinking about your work, Oren, and you were thinking about talking about sculptures, uh, sorry, structures, and sort of like the structures of society, not only just your physical structures, but there's language, like how does that isolate or connect you to other beings um, and actually use that, that idea of structures as the starting point to then curate the rest of the space. Um, which you know would put, put us in a really interesting position when um, we're then thinking about um, Amba's work uh, and also the space that then you're occupying. So maybe I'll turn over to um, to Amba. Maybe you could introduce yourself a little bit. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm Amba. I'm based in London, um, and I also co-run a project, an artist-run project, um, for a billboard space in um, Bounds Green in North London. And even just thinking about um, these kind of alternative spaces, especially during COVID to show work. Um, the billboard's like one of our projects that um, has been able to happen during COVID and lockdown. So I don't know, I think it's maybe this kind of um, interesting thing, uh, interesting to think about alternative ways to kind of make art accessible um, and especially how they function as kind of semi-democratized spaces. Um, I mean, obviously the billboard's kind of public and um, AORA you can access online. Um, but yeah, this work is, um, the work in here is a, a digital version of a physical sculpture that is in this picture, um, that was part of a show that I had um, before Christmas in a space in Deptford um, called Indigo Plus Matter. And the show is called A Mechanized Thought. Um, and broadly it focused um, on relations to otherness. Um, and I was reading a book by Wilhelm Warringer called Abstraction and Empathy. Um, and he talks a lot, well, he talks about how um, empathy functions through a process of identification with the other, whereas abstraction kind of in contrast allows for 
um, multiplicity and instability um, and is a kind of a way of communing with difference that um, kind of resists its fetishization or instrumentalization. Um, so I use abstraction a lot in my work and um, I, in the show I was thinking a lot about um, relations to otherness in the form of the non-human. Um, so it explores this in kind of three instances, um, in my material encounters in the studio, our use of language and also scientific methods. Um, so I kind of see my practice as a, as a cyborg assemblage almost composed of human mm -hmm. and human parts. Um, so whether I'm, I'm using um, stencils like in my works on paper or Rhino, uh, which is a 3D computer modeling program, which I use to make these works. Um, it's always my body kind of working in conjunction with different materials or apparatus that kind of delimit parameters of engagement. Um, and so this work, Centra, kind of sits between um, like a vertebrae or a shedded skin, um, a vertebrae kind of being the body's information highway and the skin, it's kind of interface system. Um, so I'm always interested in how materials have agency in the making process. Um, and often how this results in a kind of hybridized aesthetic. Yeah, and I'm just going to show some images here of like how it how it um, you know sits in the space. But I thought that one thing that was quite interesting, Amber, is when we were having our, our, our discussion, right? We were having a little e meet and greet because you know that's how it goes these days. Where you're just like, oh, actually what you're seeing are these sculptures that were part of my recent show in London, but I create them, as you said, in Rhino. And then it was translating them back into other digital files so that they can exist in a digital space. And there was that, that element of translation, right? And then we had that chat where you're like, ooh, maybe the, maybe the color of the blue is not gonna be quite right. So we went back and we tweaked it. And, um, you know, for Benny and I, we were actually having a thing. So when we were, we wanted to place it in the center of um, this room where we've never actually, usually it's just a pool of undulating water. And then we were also thinking, we're like, oh, do we create a small plane? Do we create it higher? Do people walk up to it? Do they not? not? Um, and it was quite interesting to create this, yeah, digital, then non-digital, then digital back. And then how do you have the digital encounter, but how do you make it something plausible? Um, and th these were all a bunch of discussions we were having. And then I thought it was quite beautiful how from there, especially when you're talking about materiality, actually as a use that as a launching pad to think about um, um, the corporal. So like, you know, flesh, body, um, like metal, different types of, um, yeah, different types of materials. Uh, and it was actually from there, then it introduced other artists into the room, um, such as like Faisal Habibi, which was, was like, oh my God, there's such a strong conversation here <laughs> so um, um whose work you sneakily see um behind but um yeah no i think it is it, 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 it's yeah really interesting and the idea of empathy i think empathy is such an incredibly important word and feeling and it trickles throughout the entire exhibition actually it's not something i'd thought about but now that you say it i'm, I'm going you know i think Empathy also is something that leads so beautifully um, into the work um, that you create, right? Princess, Princess P. Uh, I'm just going to go move over to it next. Um, I'll let you introduce yourself, but basically we created a separate hall for your work, connecting the work in hall one and connecting hall two. And it, you have your own passageway where you have these encounters with these little figurines. But I'll pass over to you, um, Princess P. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm an artist based in India. I would like to talk about my anonymity uh, to begin with. I choose to work anonymously as it gives me an alternate space to operate. What began to find, uh, I guess, a distinctive identity and a unique perspective as Princess P in my early years, I have moved towards a more collaborative time-based intervention led practice within communities. Um, I've moved into thinking about politics and aesthetics of care, women-led narratives of self and economies of domestic life amongst women and children. As for my experience in the di digital space, um, I feel uh, with everything changing, the viewing experience has to find ways to see, alternates to build community and share. And a digital space is an unknown area as the control over the medium depends on many partners the tech support with issues of speed, you know, the speed of internet accessibility and even your geographical locations. And while on one hand, there is a way as we all have started breathing digitally and our avatars are more connected with each other. But on the other hand, it lacks tactility. That's what we all are discussing here. Um, as for my process, 
um, you know, with the usual process and the this one is quite intriguing. As this is probably the first experience to view and recreate work in a space which only exists in cyberspace. It's a figment of mind and inspirational space which allows you to immerse yourself and view alone. I was wondering if we can visit the aura space collectively. How will that work? Where does it exist? Which part of the world it will be? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, uh, I was very sure when I saw the uh, proposal um, because uh, the nakedness and the volumes are something which I constantly think about, responding to the cyberspace, which is infinite, with the infinite sculptures which I conceived. Yeah, I mean, that's what I have to say. I think one of the points there that you just mentioned about being able to visit the space collectively is actually something that uh, Jen and I have been talking about. So yeah. the, the way that the space is set up now, it's very much about the individual. And I didn't mention it, but the way that you move and navigate, the way that you move the keys is supposed to reflect the movement of walking. And so it's all supposed to be quite just the right speed for it to feel like you're actually walking through a space. So we don't, we're not very into the sort of Google Maps where you zoom through the space. Yeah. So that's, that's one aspect. And I think the idea of actually collectively coming together is something that we will look at in the future so that you could essentially go with friends, um, with colleagues and, and actually experience and be able to talk about the artwork together to try and replicate that experience that you might get in a normal gallery. Um, so I think that's definitely something that would be interesting. I think for me, Princess P, when we first talked about your work, I was really taken by the whole backstory of how the pieces are made. So yes. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit more about those. I took the liberty of including this, which I thought was so wonderful from your proposal. I hope that's you, but it was like thinking about yeah the pluralism of bodies anyway, but I'll just leave it there. Yes, uh, you know this, um, I see this as an extension to my ongoing interest to find a safe, safe space. And as um, a lot of narratives which come from different um, uh, uh, women and uh, marginalized uh, people I work around with, they need a space to speak openly. And that's what I felt that working with a group of people in village who are work, who are making these amazing handcraft uh, toys, uh, they also need a space to breathe and talk about, uh, and they need to step out of their daily hustle of life. And that's how uh, I saw this dream and this dream space, which is almost like an inception. So you create a space within a space and uh, give them an opportunity and also an opportunity to yourself to create more. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it would be, I mean, I don't know if it would be possible that for the makers that make these pieces to actually visit Aura and for oh, them to cool. see the pieces that they've made in the Yeah, digitally, I guess it could be possible. Because I think that's, I mean, you also talked a lot when we first met about how you you had you you saw that an object that someone had made and then you had to spend months yeah. and months trying to search for the the specific village that this person came right. from that was making these objects yes yeah, so these are uh, this technique of turnwood in india is uh, you know a dying craft in the village and uh, no one like the generations to come nobody is interested so i, I was intrigued by this one uh, series of toys which they make in South India and I always kept thinking that what if we use the same technique to make uh, more uh, sculptures and uh, I went around in these fairs which happen every year to find out the particular person who could you know who made a, a, a sample for me and uh, after many tries I found him and it was uh, it is almost like he's they're almost like a family it's a toy village so it's incredible to go in there because every house they all are making these beautiful pieces uh, I work with one of uh, the families and they're almost they're like an adopt adoption like you know I can say that adopted family now it's amazing yeah. it's amazing what I find so interesting is how everyone's process is um, so incredibly different. And I think, you know, for 
you know, Benny and myself and, and, and Inji as well, like you being a part of the process then of, you know, trying to honor um, your works in the plural and, and, you know, and placing them in. And then it must be really interesting, you know, for like Christina and Ying, you know, as you, on the one hand, you know, consulting, educating, but then also curating in a very, how to say, in, in a very, you know, real tactile way. I mean, I've definitely found, you know, as I mean, my background is as a, as, as a curator and as a gallerist. And so I found that every single show, there's a new, there's a new challenge and there's a new reacquaintance um, with the space. And um, I wonder, I wonder maybe even, even as artists, maybe for, 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 for you, are we interested to hear, you know, like Oren, you mentioned that this is maybe one of the first times that you've really explored, you know, creating in this digital, in a digital space. Like, is, is this perhaps a launch pad? Is this a one-off? Is this maybe a new way of creating that it, or it could open up other ideas of thought? I'm interested, you know, for everyone, um, just you have to hear your points of view, but also from the point of view of, you know, Christina, obviously you're very versed with so far, but then maybe also Ying. Um, is this a stepping stone? Is this something to develop? Um, is this part of a further process of, um, of creation? Whatever that looks like to you. Whoever. <laughs> um, I, I I'll can... check that. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, so, go ahead uh, Lauren. Okay. Just, um, just to briefly say um, that I actually work often with uh, SketchUp as part wow. of my process, but um, it, it, this is the first time that, you know, it, it becomes um, the space where, where the work is existing as, as a kind of like the end uh, goal or, or the space where the interaction with the viewer happen. And that's, that's something that for me, um, I, I do hope to continue to think about because there is something um, that is made possible there that I think is um, only possible when you see the work in person. And even then it's a different experience because I think that here the emphasis for me is on on the symbolic like the when you think about the material um the tactility trying to imitate the light um the way you will navigate through the space it's it's all physical but it's all through the the kind of layer of the the image the symbolic um and the way they're already incorporated in in our bodies and our thinking so that's something that um i feel like i it kind of meets my interest uh, with psychoanalysis and in, in, in architecture in, in a very special way that I was surprised to discover through this process. And, and yes, I do hope to think of ways to maybe um, continue that um, in, in the future. Yeah, to your question, Jen, um, you know, I mean, like even now looking at this image, looking at uh, Oren's work, um, there's a thoroughfare, right? There's a, there's a way that you journey through aura. And I suppose, um, you know, I, we think about the digital or the virtual world as in the future um, and we're in the past, we're, we're uh, on the verge of, or becoming more and more virtual and more and more digital. But I suppose that perhaps what the future of aura could be or of these uh, virtual exhibition halls um, there must be kind of a, a, a two-way um, going and going to and fro between the worlds um, of the digital and the physical. Um, and I think living in that synchronicity will be interesting because like you mentioned, or in SketchUp, you know, you use SketchUp to create something in the physical. Here we are doing it vice versa but actually it's a loop you know you, you created these loop. works in SketchUp yeah. and then you know and so I think that uh, more and more there will be more of these synchronous um, exhibitions and and ways of making exhibitions and as and also ways of seeing and being in spaces um, and I think that that that's going to be super su super interesting for you know the 2020s and next decades to come yeah yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. And I, it's really interesting to hear this, this aspect of retranslation that the artists have brought up. 
Um, cause I, yeah, I, I mean, I find the process of translation being, um, fascinating and within this sort of digital physical, um, platform as well. But what I really, well, what, what has occurred to me, I suppose, through this process is how, how this through, through the retranslation of people's works and developing these exhibitions, um, is is how how much different things have sort of like for example the the winter light that you were talking about Benny in the beginning there was there was a time where I remember you know not not today in London because it's this glorious sunny day um, out of the blue but you uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know before this when it was sort of endlessly gray there was this feeling of like I was thinking to myself you know how how would you communicate this sort of unterminable grayness which has has these different elements of of sort of gloom and and beauty within it you know how how do we capture that feeling through um through sort of trying to express that um, somewhere else. And it occurred to me that that per particularly with, with this digital um, digital space, that it's a way, it's a way of feeling it and communicating something through these re retranslations um, of something that is really hard to pinpoint. So so yeah, I, I find that really, really interesting. And, you know, and it, it goes to show that that you were talking about, you know, how Nick was trying to very finely tune the different surfaces and and that adds to the sort of um, retranslation and the presentation um, in this exhibition, obviously. But it's just interesting how different aspects come, come to the fore um that you sort of might not have have previously noticed um in 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 through the the sort of platform of of this digital digital way of exhibiting physical works i love your emphasis on feeling so feeling is very much at the core of aura i mean i didn't really talk about it at the start but actually the original idea for it um was uh, from a brief episode I had in hospital. And I noticed that there was art on the walls of corridors, but none in patients' rooms. Um, and turns out that both Benny and I in tandem had been looking <laughs> separately, but at the, at the, the health relationships um, between um, architecture or art um, and you know, our own neurological sequences and how it makes you feel good how it alleviates pain, how it reduces stress, how it improves your mood. And that was a, that's a very big core tenet of what we set out to create because how do you infuse a digital space with A, feeling, and B, create an activation of the senses? And I think, you know, the activation of the senses comes down to, you know, carrying over, you know, what, Amber has been thinking about, which is empathy. Um, it comes over to care, you know, in every single detail. Um, and yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's that that yeah that activation of the senses, whether it be through light. I mean, we've really not talked we've not talked that much about the music component, but what's quite interesting is that um, um, there's two composers for this show, and one of them in particular, she actually has a background um, as an architect, and she's thinking about the way music infuses spaces. Um, so she's a composer and an architect. So it's all about that multi-sensory um, feeling. And, you know, I think there's been a lot of discussion around the digital world, right? In the sense of, oh, a transla in translation, but kind of translation as replication. But this is not translation as replication. This is translation as hopefully otherness, just something different. Um, which I think is something different is something that uh, not to completely extrapolate, but I think it's something that um, Oren touched upon. But yeah, feeling, I think that's really important. And just kind of having a sense, you know, as opposed to over intellectualizing it, um, also just experiencing something. Yeah, um, I just add to that, that I think that what we've set out to do is not recreate the experience of any old gallery. And 
we also don't want to be seen as someone or you know a, a platform that's trying to replace art galleries we you know we're very much about community we like people coming together hence why we do this yeah and I think what's really interesting and what we want to try and get across is that Aura is is like what Jen said is is something else and it's something that I think I'm sure all of you artists will have noticed you kind of you might see your artwork in a very different way and everyone sees and experiences and feels artwork uh, art um, artworks very differently from one another and I think by putting it in a digital world we kind of give something else you might see you know one of Oren's work in, in a church but actually you see it in this space and you'll experience it in a very different way it will probably feel very different to you so I think that's something that really really excites us and going back to the, the whole start of this project um, when we were thinking about how do we make art more accessible you know we got really really excited when we started to think someone who would never have stepped into a gallery before for whatever reasons for whether they thought they weren't privileged enough suddenly we've given a place for people all over the world to visit a gallery to see these amazing sculptures amazing artwork and they don't need to feel that you know that that barrier so we really, really hope that by doing this and keep working on it, that we will open it up to, to people to inspire them. And um, yeah, I feel very, very proud and very excited by, you know, the, the, the support that we've all had, especially from you artists, from, from everyone that's coming to our talks, because, you know, more and more we're sort of learning what opportunities we have here. And um, I'd like to kind of open it up as a question, maybe, let's hear from Amber to say, what sort of experience have you had by seeing your own artwork in a digital space? Yeah, no, it's, it's interesting that it kind of feels like it's come full circle, especially because I was using Rhino. So like all of the works were initially made um, like as kind of digital renders. And um, yeah, like during the last lockdown, I kind of was playing kind of more freely with Rhino. So not thinking about material constraints, which I think really drastically changed the kind of works that I was um, making. I felt like there were more digital drawings and I, I guess I only see them really um, circulating online as like images. Um, so yeah, with the work for Aura, it's kind of, it's weird even thinking about, oh, how, how would the metal look or the powder coated finish and things like that. So um, yeah, I guess it's, on both sides had um, more of a concern with like um, these kind of material, like physical material um, properties, which some of the other digital drawings um, wouldn't have. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. No, I think it's, it is fascinating. And, you know, for me, the same as an architect, um, when you design a space or a building, you're, you're so constrained by how can you actually build it? How can you actually create that finish? And that's what's been amazing about doing this project is that every time we sort of tweak the color of the wall or we, we tweak the, the heaviness of the texture. And, you know, in this view that we're seeing here um, in one of the past shows, it was very much about how the light came through. So you could really experience the light coming in and it felt like this outside space. And I really, really feel that actually in, in Adeline's work where you, you do have that, I think this is what you were saying is, where you feel like you want to be able to touch it like the fact that you kind of see the texture of this velvety material and, I, and I've certainly got that from most of the works that I've seen um, I came across your work initially through the London bronze sculpture competition and then I saw the works where you are using the material of the land and maybe you can talk a little bit more about something that you talked about when we first met which was can art be functional Mm. Yes, I think it's a question that I've uh, I've been really enjoyed exploring uh, at the moment because it makes people in the art world so uncomfortable. And I think where there is uncomfort needs to be questioned and raised. So I also having read Noguchi's biography and being really aware of of him of his philosophy of all these different categories of architecture, design, art, are all man-made, they're all, we, we tend to separate them and we like, like to put things into boxes. But essentially, if we are human beings living in the world, there shouldn't be any distinction. 
everything should be a part, uh, a part of the same thing. Um, so I've, I, I, I like to, to, to play with the notion of functionality in the work or suggest it or, and, 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 and explore the, the interaction with the public. So I think this is something I'm, I'm doing a lot at the moment is just test out how interaction plays in my work because I used, to, I used to do it implicitly earlier in my work when it, I would um, imply touch. So I, would, uh, I worked on this series where um, the sculptures were made out of hand-blown glass and I, I placed uh, of fur inside. So the tactility was really implied. You could see the fur, but you had no access to it. So mm. you would go through a process of what I used to call touching with your eyes. And... And in a way, we're experiencing the same thing here in the digital world. We're touching yeah. with our eyes. We are in our mind going through past uh, experiences where we have touched similar materials. So we're, we remember what it feels like to touch steel or velvet, but it's playing out as a, as a reality in our mind, not in the ac actual world. So it remains potential rather than rather than becoming actual. So this is something George Agamben would talk a lot about, how when something remains potential, it stays a lot stronger as an experience in our mind. I think that's really, really fascinating. And I'm just thinking about how essentially we as humans are probably evolving without us knowing, because, you know, no, never in our lifetime, you know, if we even think 10 years, have we had so many images at our disposal and we're sort of having to learn to associate an image with a feeling. And like what you just said, you know, looking at the velvety material, you can suddenly almost imagine touching it. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm just imagining, you know, my niece and nephews who are so in, into the digital, they live and breathe the digital now, how their <laughs> brains must work so differently to even ours because of how, uh, you know, in some ways obsessed they are. Um, we, this, there was a, conversation that we had in one of our talks um, last year which was about art in the digital and I remember mentioning that when when my niece and nephews were growing up they they wouldn't watch the original uh, jungle book and they wouldn't watch the you know the the real drawn cartoons because they just couldn't they didn't find those images interesting it had to be 3d the things that they watched had to have a very different feel and I almost wonder whether art in the future is going to have that impact you know if it's if all, almost suddenly stuff is designed purely in the digital and um yeah I don't know Chris, Christina do you have any you're nodding away do you have any comments 100 percent we better get ready for Gen Z <laughs> what they're gonna mess with our minds um I mean already you know I, I think the you know people who are our parents' age can, can barely fathom um, art that's, that's being done now. I mean, even if you look at, say, the calligraphy that's hanging behind me, you know, this artist is 100 years old and he would never depart from ink and ink brush and, 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 and this Japanese uh, rice paper, um, let alone, <laughs> so I mean, an entire generation um, who knows what's to come. So that's, that's all very exciting. Yeah. I think what's to come is a great um, place to, to, to leave this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> not to leave this conversation I think it's an ongoing conversation about, about you know loving a good cliffhanger um and a you know to be continued um but I you know I just want to say well I'm definitely gonna have a lot to think about um I have scheduled into my day a long walk after this because um it's beautiful weather as um Ling mentioned and um I think that's one of the things of our aura hopefully it's not just a this point we come together or one time you go and visit it's something that hopefully sparks a way of thinking and a way of seeing um that you carry into your everyday um but you know thank you so much um all of you for participating and for joining and for speaking and sharing um no, please do go visit the space if you haven't yet. And please stay tuned, you know, for our talks program. Um, next week, um, we'll be having a conversation about um, being digitally native. And actually, it'll be Amber um, in conversation with uh, Melanie Pocock, who's a curator at Icon Gallery in Birmingham, along with Sarah Foreman, who's a writer for 
Art Asia Pacific, Art Review, and a whole bunch of other great magazines. And but there's more talks coming and coming, so um, please stay tuned. Um, and yeah, I mean, a really big thank you to all of you. Um, you know, this is it's been you know very very exciting journey and one that we continue developing. And I just think um, yeah. It, it, We've we've been sharing and you know I would say proudly so sharing a little bit about it but I think Benny and I a real turning point you know for us you know as co-founders was this week we got picked up by the Evening Standard as one of the museums and best art things to see online uh, in London 2021 alongside National Gallery and. I don't know, the Tate, and we're like, what? We're, we're seven months old, this little platform. <laughs> but it's testament to, you know, uh, the, the, the quality of you guys, your work and the community. So thank you. Yeah, I echo that. Thank you all. And thanks thank for joining. You. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank, you. thank you. Great chat. Bye.